Hello and welcome to NASCOM Technology and Leadership Forum 2024. I'm Anisha Nair Dhavan. Today we are picking the brains of technology leaders to find out how AI and specifically Gen AI is going to impact our lives, our lifestyles and businesses. I'm now joined by Mr. Amit Kumar Srivastav. He's the head of AI at Fujitsu India. Thank you so much Amit for joining us. Amit, tell us how is generative AI impacting the future of industry now and few years down the line? Okay, let me provide uh, with a specific example in retail. Let's say if you are entering a supermarket and then AI powered, uh, camera powered by AI start understanding your behavior like your body postures, your emotions and so on. And this is just done through by your body skeleton and joints without capturing any PIA details. Once this information is captured, then it will pass the information to a generative AI technology and that generative AI technology basically creates an avatar and that avatar started explaining you about the product or item that is placed inside the shop or supermarket. And this is not only going to address the labor shortage problem, but also help you to take informed decision about product if you want to purchase it or not, like confident or if you, if you are, let's say, if you are, if you are not confident, then uh, the avatar will provide you additional information about it. So this is how it's going to basically impact industry. This was one example from retail, but if you see the down, down the lines, like uh, um, probably after 24 and so on. So you have seen how supervised learning has improved artificial intelligence. Like um, how uh, you have a lot of use cases floating around and mostly they are based upon supervised learning. Probably after five or, or five or six years, the generative AI will be, you know, at similar to that level where we can see that right now, um, how the supervised learning is performing. Probably after four or five years, the generative AI will perform. Right now we are in phase two, uh, uh, discover or find correct use cases for our industry. Still, it's at very early stage, but it has shown potential in multilingual capabilities, like trying to uh, uh, tr trying to add people across the globe uh, more towards inclusivity. So, yeah, this is how it's going to be, basically. So what is supervised yeah. learning? Because yeah. all we know so far, I mean, most people know about Gen AI is like fancy looking pictures, nice PPTs, you give the right prompt and you get a great result. Your your effort is reduced. What is supervised learning in? Supervised, uh, supervised learning is like, let's say if you have a data and you have an answer for the data, data mm -hmm. as well, like mm -hmm. data and label. For an example, if I put an image here and if I label it as a cat, then this is a data and this is a label, that is cat. Mm -hmm. So this is supervised learning where you have data available and you have label available as well. But right now, uh, uh, if you see all, mostly, uh, the AI projects are executed by supervised learning. You have also unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning and so on as well. Probably we will see the similar sort of craze or similar sort of, uh, you know, the use cases from the generative AI perspective after four or five years. This is the period where we have to identify the correct use cases. We have to improve the generative AI algorithms and so on. And probably, as I said, five years down the line, you are going to see the generative AI would have the similar sort of impact like we have supervised learning into production. Okay, so you've spoken about Gen AI, supervised learning, but there's also deep fakes. Correct. And we've seen examples of those and even the government is concerned Correct. about what's happening there. So what is the role of governance in Gen AI? Yeah, it can, you know, pull a rabbit out of the hat, but, um, you know, what about ethics and how do you stop wrongdoings? Because that's also becoming a headache. See, uh, first of all, a lot of organizations have their internal policies and guidelines. So they are following that. That's one uh, area or that's one place you can control deep fakes. Okay, that's one part. Uh, from a global perspective or let's say from a national perspective, if you talk from the India, per, in India uh, as per se. So uh, right now what I feel that Indian market is quite different compared to, compared to you know, European market or maybe other market as well. Here, uh, before putting legislation or regulation, we need to understand our culture, we need to understand how we basically act in different situations and so on, because it's a diverse country, right? But in case, if we have to put legislation, I think defects are one area that uh, we can put legislation part, like moving from regulation to legislation. Mm -hmm. And uh, how to control it, as you said, you know, Prime Minister was talking about uh, defects in GPI submit this year, last year. And uh, he was talking about, can we just put some sort of watermark 
if I am creating a deep fake or if my organization is creating deep fake and can we put some sort of uh, um, watermark so that it can be traced easily and we can know from where it is coming right. So, this is one way to identify or to track deep fakes. Mm -hmm. But I thought the whole idea of deep fake is to you know hide its origin and fool people. So, why would you it's put a watermark? Like that. So, deep fakes are also used in many industries like in cinema or probably if you have some blurred picture or uh, then you can recreate the images as well from that. Okay. So, a lot of places deep fakes can be used in a better way okay. uh, in a good way. And then there are downsides of defects as well, if, if used, you know, uh, in, a, in otherwise as well. I think we have a lot of examples floating over internet these mm. days right now, correct. So, we have both the uh, aspect of defects, mm. we have to see how to control the other part of that. But you don't think a global standard is going to work in India? If it, when it comes to governance, you think we need to have our local laws? See, uh, uh, before local laws, we need to understand can we create our local AI models or not? Mm. Are they being created? Yeah, right now it's been created. People mm -hmm. are working on that, right? Uh, for, uh, the best example is multilingual capability, multilingual mm -hmm. AI or generative AI. Mm -hmm. and, and even if you see the government, uh, government uh, through Bhashini or maybe Bhashadan, where you can basically contribute through text or speech or videos, and uh, uh, that's also going to help uh, uh, government or maybe people to create or companies to create localized solution. Hmm. Uh, this localized is Gen AI solution, Gen AI solution okay. right? Because we are talking about multilingual capability mm -hmm. here as well, mm -hmm. right? And, and as I said initially, like this is going to help with inclusivity to enforce or maybe to provide government or public services to the last mile as well. So, this is where it is going, right? Uh, what about things like bias in Gen AI? Because okay. uh, mm -hmm. you spoke about supervised learning. But it will only learn what you feed it, right? Correct. So, how isn't what being fed also a type of a bias? Correct. So, uh, when you see the Gen AI perspective and probably the large language models that we see these days or probably, probably we use, these are not created with Indian specific data or Indian specific mindset, I would say. Uh, keeping the cultural context or the local uh, aspects in mind. For example, in India, we have a lot of dialects. We have created a Gen, a gen AI solution for, uh, uh, let us say for chat GPT, you can converse in English, right? Uh, but does it understand uh, the local context, local cultural context, dialects and so on? I think uh, probably no, you know, with that, uh, uh, you know, with that, uh, there is a limitation, this is what I want to say that. Now, the, the mo these models are created outside country. So, by you know, uh, inherently, this there is some sort of uh, biasness because this is not, not truly created. Indian. Yeah, truly Indian. Hmm. So, can we create AI model? Those are very specific to India. That's why I was talking about local AI models. Hmm. And government is uh, government uh, needs to play a big role here because government sits, sits on most of the data. They have uh, you know uh, ownership of huge chunk of data. Hmm. If they release those data. Um, and then companies can utilize those data or maybe individuals can you know pick those data and create the solution. Isn't that already underway? You had, uh, yeah, it is already IOS underway. That is what I said. Yeah. That is what I said. Bhashadan is one uh, initiative. Uh, there are other initiatives as well. Mm -hmm. But this is how you are going to address biases to an extent. Apart from algorithm biases, you have to address the data biases. Okay. And to address that, you need diverse kind of data, right? And here in India, even after 50 kilometer culture change, uh, you know, dialect change and so mm -hmm. on, that is why these initiatives are really important All to right. address biases. Uh, what about, you know, uh, the skill sets required here? Because uh, AI is going to bring in its own requirements for skill sets and the worry that it is going to replace jobs, people are not going to have jobs because the computer is going to do it all. And the third one, is the ecosystem in our country ready to be able to do this competition, the amount of competition required? Okay, uh, so your first question was? Was the skill set required? Skill set required. So see, there are various kind of skill set that is required for Genetive AI based upon the context and what kind of job, job roles you are looking for. For example, if you do not understand machine learning or generative AI at all, for example, mm. but you know how to program, how to code and how mm. to access APIs or cloud system and so on, still can use generative AI APIs, you can just consume the APIs and create solution out of it. Mm. So, this is citizen data scientist or citizen developer where you are just consuming APIs, you do not need to have the generative AI background. So, you have space for those people as well. Um, with respect to, uh, uh, let us say, you have specific uh, journal for research as well, you have data scientists as well, you have now job roles getting created for data annotators, those who have only to create the data annotations, mm -hmm. right. You have people, those who are working on data engineering side as well. And in fact, you know, uh, right now uh, we heard a lot about prompt engineering or prompt skill. Mm -hmm. 
Let's say if you are not from AI background or technology background, but still you want to use AI system. So you, you need to understand, or you, or you need to understand and use those AI tools, right? Yeah. And that tools requires that tools understanding. Uh, 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 using that tools requires some sort of basic understanding how to navigate within the tool and so on. Yeah. Even HR people or you know other people can also use AI tools. And the context, uh, the content creation is one of one of the finest example yeah. with just one simple UI. Everybody start uh, started getting used to that Chat GPT or mm. Bard and so on. Mm. So you just need to understand how to use computer, how to use internet. If you are not from AI background, mm. as I said, if you are from developer background, just understand how to access APIs, use those APIs, mm. be a citizen developer, and so on. What if I worked in a call center? A bot came, my job went then. Uh, sorry, if you can just. If I worked in a call center okay. mm -hmm. and a bot came and answered all the questions mm -hmm. the customer have, mm -hmm. what do I do? I don't have. No, so bot do not have human emotions. They do not understand the human hardship. So after an extent, the call needs to be transferred to the humans, right? So their human comes into picture. Let's say a bot provided you some basic information to you, or try to you know interact with you in a way. But you, board will not be able to understand the personal circumstances yeah. or maybe the human hardship. Their human uh, uh, needs to get into that. So I call this augment intelligence as well. Like sometimes board will provide you multiple options, but as a human, you need to decide whether you want to go ahead with that or not. This is one part. The other part is that once the board concluded something in discussion with the you know the customer, and probably if board is not understanding the human context, then call needs to be transferred to the human. Okay. So, so there is space for human and there is space for AI as well. All right. Yeah. And um, what is the outlook for uh, Gen AI, like 2024 and beyond? How do you see it evolving in India? See, uh, in India. And around the world. Okay, uh, around the world. See, uh, Gen AI, as I said, people are still trying to figure out the correct use cases for Gen AI. Already, uh, there are few. Um, in conversational side, uh, people have accepted it, like multi-language capability and so on, chatbots and so on. Apart from that, uh, we are seeing Gen AI getting into the drug discovery part as well. And in Fujitsu, for example, in my organization, we have created a solution to, uh, to basically create the protein structure or to uh, predict the protein uh, conformation. So this is one example, like how generative AI can be utilized in you know, medicine side or drug discovery and so on. Similarly, as I said, we are still trying to figure out a lot of uh, you know, areas where generative AI can be implemented. As I said, this is a very early stage. Even the generative AI algorithms are evolving, whether it is from the audio side or video side. So I, what I feel that probably, as I said initially, after four or five years, you'll have the similar sort of traction in production mm -hmm. that is already with the supervised learning right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Yeah. That we see a lot of uh, homegrown developments and homegrown solutions coming in uh, for AI. Thank you so sure. much for speaking with us. Thank you so much.